good morning everybody. I hope you're all well and keeping safe. Uh, you're all very welcome to our service of morning prayer on this the fifth Sunday of Lent, uh, commonly known as the beginning of Passion Tide. I was just thinking there as I was getting ready to record that uh, for us ladies, <coughs> the hair is getting longer, it's getting greyer, the nails are getting shorter, and the fake tan has long gone. However, the way to look at it is, each day that passes, we're closer to a state of semi-normality, hopefully and closer to the day whenever we'll all be able to meet together in our lovely church surroundings and see each other. Now, as I say, you're all very welcome, whether you're watching this or listening to it on the telephone. Our service begins on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 101. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our sentence of scripture is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us spend a few quiet moments before we confess our sins to God our Father. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 103. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. You'll find the psalm set for this Sunday on page 650. Page 650. It's psalm number 51 and we say together verses 1 to 13. 
Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion. Blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. I have been wicked even from my birth, a sinner when my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth deep within me and shall make me understand wisdom in the depths of my heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Bible reading for this Sunday is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever <coughs> serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord.
Thanks be to God. May the words from my lips and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'd like to tell you a, quite a funny story. Uh, it sort of illustrates what was happening in our Bible reading this morning. It's a story about a man who was watching television and his wife was trying to engage him in a conversation. <clears throat> she said, Dear, the plumber didn't come to fix the leak behind the water heater today. The husband says, Right. The wife replied, The pipe burst today and flooded the kitchen. Husband, Quiet. We're one goal up and an extra time. Wife, some of the wiring got wet and almost electrocuted wee Fluffy. Husband, darn it, one all. Wife, the vet says he'll be better in a week or so. Husband, can you get me a Coke? Wife, the plumber told me that he was happy that our pipe broke because now he can afford to go on holiday. Husband, Aren't you listening? I said I could use a cook. Wife. And Stanley, I'm leaving you. The plumber and I are flying to Spain in the morning. Husband. Can you please stop all that yakking and get me a cook? The trouble around here is that nobody ever listens to me. Poor man. Nobody was listening. Our Bible reading this morning was set six days before the celebration of the Passover. Passover was a massive celebration in Jerusalem. Josephus, the notable Jewish historian, estimated that over two million people were attracted to the great Passover feast. Devout Jews from all around the Mediterranean came to offer their sacrifices to God and to pay their half-shekel temple tax. Do you remember a few weeks ago I was talking to the children about the temple and the changing, changing of money? I wonder how you're all doing with your drawings of the temple. We're told that 256,500 lambs were slain at one such Passover and that each lamb represented at least 10 worshippers. So you can see what a crowd was present. Among those who came for the celebration were Romans, Persians, Syrians, Egyptians and Greeks. As our Bible reading opens, Jesus is in Bethany, where Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived. Bethany was a small village about one and a half miles from Jerusalem. This was some time after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. In gratitude, Mary and Martha were throwing a dinner in Jesus' honour. Lazarus, of course, was there, alive and in the flesh, as we say. A large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because they wanted to see him, but also to see Lazarus. Lazarus had become somewhat of a celebrity. We can imagine the tabloid headlines, Bethany resident first man to be raised from the dead. We've noted that since the beginning of his ministry, Jesus had a a sort of a, a rock star kind of following. The raising of Lazarus did nothing to discourage that. As one of the Pharisees said to a colleague, look how the whole world has gone after him. Among those who came to see Jesus were some Greeks. They approached Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Philip's surname was Greek and his home village was known as a place where there were numerous Greek descendants. 
Maybe the visiting Greeks thought Philip would be more open to their inquiries than the other disciples. Sir, they said to him, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and together they told Jesus. Jesus was not impressed. He replied, as he often did, with a somewhat cryptic message about his coming death. He concludes his response to them by saying, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. Seemingly this was an audible voice, a voice which could be heard by anyone listening. But notice this, John tells us that the crowd that was there and heard the voice coming down from heaven dismissed it as thunder. Others said that an angel had spoken to Jesus. In response to their action, Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. That's interesting, don't you think? God spoke from the heavens, but the people who heard the sound of God speaking simply dismissed it as thunder. The phrase, blah, 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 fills the same purpose in today's vernacular. To the crowd that day when God spoke, it meant nothing to them. It was blah, blah, blah. It was only the sound of thunder. I wish that is what the people heard that day when the voice spoke from heaven. Blah, blah, blah. But Mark described it like this. The crowd that was there and heard the voice said it had thundered. Here's the truth of the matter. Many people are so disconnected from God that if God were to speak to them, they would not hear his voice. All they would hear would be thunder. Jesus said to those who heard only thunder, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. But they did not hear. There's a rather obscure definition of sin in the Bible. It comes from a Hebrew word that means a failure to listen. When we fail to listen, we are cut off from whoever is speaking to us. In George Bernard Shaw's play, St. Joan, which of course is about Joan of Arc, Joan tells of hearing God's messages. She's talking to King Charles. Charles doesn't appreciate this crazy lady in armour who insists on leading armies. He's threatened by her. He says, Oh, your voices, your voices, always your voices. Why don't the voices come to me? I am king, not you. Joan replies, they do come to you, but you do not hear them. You have not sat in the field in the evening listening for them. When the Angelus rings, you cross yourself and have done with it. But if you prayed from your heart and listened to the trilling of the bells in the air after they stop ringing, you would hear the voices as well as I do. Joan heard the voice of God. The king, if he heard anything at all, heard only thunder. Why? Because she was listening for that voice. Some people are so disconnected from God that they never hear God's voice. Other people are so preoccupied with their own pursuits that they're unaware 
when God speaks. There's a time-honoured story about uh, an old farmer who was persuaded by his nephew to visit the big city. The young man proudly took the farmer on a tour of the large metropolis. At one point as they walked down the street, the old man suddenly stopped and asked, Did you hear that? The young man looked at the milling pedestrians and the traffic and the sound of the horns and replied, Hear what? A cricket, the old man said as he walked towards a little tuft of grass growing out of a crack next to a tall building. Sure enough, there tucked in the crack was a cricket. The young man was amazed. How could you pick up the sound of a cricket and all this noise, he asked. The old farmer didn't say a word and just reached into his pocket pulled out a couple of coins and dropped them noisily on the footpath. Immediately a number of people began to reach for their pockets or look down at the, at the footpath. The old man observed, We hear what our ears are trained to hear. Psychologist Ellen Langer says that many people are so preoccupied with their daily tasks that they rarely listen to those around them. It's like that little game that children play. What do you call a tree that has acorns? Oak. What do you call a funny story? Joke. What do you call the sound made by a frog? Croak. What do you call the white of an egg? Ah, how many of you said in your mind, yolk? The correct answer, of course, is the white. But nearly everyone gets it wrong. They've become accustomed to words ending in oak sound, and so they answer, the yolk. How well do we listen to those around us? How well do we listen to God? It's so important to know that God speaks to those who listen. Not audibly, perhaps. We worry when somebody says they hear voices, as we should. The voice of God will be an inward voice, a silent voice, a voice within the mind. God may speak through a friend. God may speak through a strong emotion. Someone says, I felt God telling me that I should support that mission project. And I am confident God did. The greatest untapped source of power in this world is the unheeded voice of God in human affairs. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. If we are not daily communicating with God, making known our requests and listening for God's reply, we are missing out on the greatest resources life has to offer, the leading of God in an uncertain world. Mother Teresa of Calcutta put it this way, We need to find God and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, grass thrive in silence. See the stars, the moon, the sun, how they move in silence. The more we receive in silent prayer, the more we can give in our act of life. We need silence to be able to touch souls. The essential thing is not what we say, but what God says to us and through us. Very wise words from Mother Teresa. 
there's an old saying, I, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it goes like, God give you two ears and one mouth. So you must listen twice as much as you speak. God spoke, but almost all of the people heard thunder. How about us? Do we hear God's voice today? Amen. Now we proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And <clears throat> lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, <clears throat> the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> A Collect of the Fifth Sunday of Lent <clears throat> Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lenten Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting of our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the first collect of morning prayer, which you'll find on page 114. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies 
that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you were lifted up on the cross for us and for our salvation. Help us to triumph over evil and to do good, to give ourselves to you as you give yourself for us, and to live and work to your praise and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, may we bring others to know you, in knowing you to love you, and in loving you to serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom. We pray for all, all the Church in the world, every Church. We pray for our own Diocese of Down and Dromore, for Bishop David. We pray for our area dean, Canon John Achmoody. We pray for our priest in charge, Canon Walter Laverty. We pray for our parish readers, Katrina, Margaret, and Wendy, who is in training to be a diocesan lay reader. Guide and strengthen the mission and outreach of your people. We pray for missionary societies, for CMS, for our own link in the Diocese of Bukavi, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. We pray for leaders of nations, for rulers of peoples, Praying especially for the government in Westminster and in Stormont, that they may work with sensitivity and in humility. We pray for nations emerging from tyranny, for freedom movements and all who work for liberty. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. We remember all who have been generous to us, all who have shared their resources and their lives. We pray for parents who sacrificed for us, for their giving of time and attention and love. We pray for those who have been denied love, for all who have been deprived of well-being. We remember today children taken into care. Lord, as you give yourself for us, <coughs> let us give ourselves to you. <coughs> we give thanks for the passion and cross of our Lord for the gift of the redemption. We pray for all troubled souls, those anxious about their health or their future, remembering especially all those affected by coronavirus, COVID-19. <coughs> we remember all who are being persecuted for their beliefs or their principles. For all who are suffering at this time, especially anyone known to us, 
and anyone from our own parish. We think of everyone who is ill at this time, especially those recovering from surgery. Remembering especially in our prayers, Siobhan and Rosemary. Lord, lay your healing hand upon them. Make their, your loving presence known to them, that they may seek their healing and strength and comfort from you. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. Lord, give comfort to the bereaved. Give courage to the dying. We pray for all who have entered where sorrow and pain are no more. We give thanks for their lives and know that they are safe in your arms. We remember loved ones who have entered into eternal life and we join with them to sing your praises. Lord, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. In a few moments of silence, let us bring our own thoughts prayers and petitions to the throne of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, teach us more of the meaning of our Saviour's words when he spoke of the ear of wheat falling to the ground and dying, that it might produce many seeds. May we die to sin, that we may be set free to live a new life. May we die with Christ, that we may live with him as your servants in eternal life. By your grace and in Jesus' name. Amen. As an act of fellowship, let us say together the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and to be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you everybody for joining together for this service of morning prayer. I actually had to record this service twice because I've got a bit of a cold and I started coughing, couldn't stop. And then surprisingly, Buddy was up at the window and he started barking. Somebody must have been going past or maybe a, a leaf or something blown down the road. but. He started barking and I couldn't hear a thing. So let's find the culprit. Where are you, buddy? There you are. He was barking. He was barking. Come on, get up to see you. Come on. Up, up. No. He's not going to come and see anybody today. Where do we see, buddy? He was barking in the first recording. It was you. It was. Yes, it was. You rascal. And I had to start again, didn't we? <clears throat> we had to start again. So as I say, I hope you all are keeping well. 
and safe. Now, next Sunday will be Holy Communion, Palm Sunday. But um, the following Sunday, of course, is Easter Sunday. And Walter will also be celebrating Holy Communion on Easter Sunday. So the family service will be moved to the second Sunday of April. So that's <clears throat> the second Sunday of April will be the family service. <clears throat> right, everybody. That's about it for... For this Passion Sunday, fifth Sunday of Lent, please stay safe and don't forget we'll all be back together very soon. Okay everybody, thank you very much for your company and I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye bye, God bless you all, bye, 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 bye.